Barricade Rides, videos for motorcycle enthusiasts. I'm back at Emerald City Harley with my boy David, and he's gonna go over the points, the pros and cons between the 2021 Street Bob and the 2021 Fat Bob. Stay tuned till the end of the video, and we're each gonna select which bike is our favorite. So let's check out these bikes. Hey everybody, David with Emerald City Harley Davidson. Barricade, thanks a lot for, uh, for coming in and filming some more bikes. Love working with you. Um, guys, we're gonna talk about the Street Bob versus the Fat Bob. So, the name sounds like they're cousins, right? Um, maybe they are? I'll tell you what one of the similarities are between these two bikes. These both started their lives as Dynas. They were on the Dyna platform. So we had the Dyna Street Bob, we had the Dyna Fat Bob. Uh, that also with the uh, Lowrider S used to be a Dyna. So, and the Lowrider. So when Harley decided to discontinue the Dyna platform, they wanted to keep these bikes and the Lowrider S and the Lowrider going on the soft tail platform. So they underwent a transformation on these bikes from the, the kind of the more rugged, rough, tumble, sporty Dyna frame that was really popular. Um, they moved it onto the soft tail frame. And what they really did was they did an awesome job of maintaining the look of each of the bikes. You can look at this bike next to a Dyna version of this bike, and the similarities are really obvious. They did a masterful job of moving them from one platform to another. Same with this bike. Um, they both have Milwaukee 8114 as a standard. The Street Bob used to, until 2020, come with a 107. This last year, they moved it up. They, they really raised the game on the Street Bob. So now it's got the 114 cubic inch Milwaukee 8. Massive power on this bike. The other thing they did was they added some other features. Last year, this bike didn't come with the rear pillion seat, and it didn't come with rear pegs. So now you've got a bike that isn't just a solo bike. It's set up from the factory to accommodate a passenger. You've got the foot pegs, you've got the 114, and then they added some bolder graphics. So this bike is in a vivid black with a Baja orange inset. This is all paint. It's not a sticker. That's paint, it's under the clear coat. So it's designed to last just as long as the finish on this bike, uh, on, on you know the other, the other paint colors. It's, um, it's a really striking bike. It's got a real, it's kind of got a boldness to it, but it's still kind of refined. So, 114 cubic inch engine, six speed transmission, as do all the uh, big twins now. Six speed transmission, you've got this two into two exhaust with a little bit of a crossover. So, the intake on this engine is actually a high flow intake, which means that if you want to go stage one, you don't have to do a thing here. All you've got to do is add some slip-ons and get a tune. Screaming Eagle Tune maintains your warranty on this bike. So, the way this bike performs out of the factory, just right off the sales floor, is really kind of astounding. You make it a stage one or stage two, you've got a real performance bike. Now, there are some things about this bike, too. It's somewhere between a performance and a cruiser. It has great lean angle. Uh, it's got these rubber gaiters on the front forks, kind of gives it that real sporty look. It also does help protect your, your forks just a little bit. Um, it's also got the classic lace steel wheels with the blacked out rim. Now you're running Dunlops, which Harley has been running Dunlops for generations. Really great tire. They're made to Harley specifications by Dunlop. It's a great partnership. And boy, that has so much to do with the way this bike handles. This one has, as, as the name suggests, kind of a bobber look to it. It's that real simple, small kind of front fender, kind of the chop rear fender, right? So it's got that bobber look. Um, I love how they blacked out the heads on this engine. Same with the with the fat bob. Um, gives it that again that that kind of that tougher look. The suspension on this bike, soft tail suspension. So they in 2018 they redid the frame. When they moved this from Dyna to soft tail. No longer do you have two shocks underneath the frame, hard to get to, almost impossible to adjust. Now you've got a simple screw. You can actually undo this with your fingers. Pop your seat off, you adjust the suspension if you're taking a passenger with a simple spanner wrench. 
super easy, but it's a monoshock suspension which actually handles better and performs better, but it still gives you that comfort that you want from a soft pedal. The other thing I really like about this bike are the handlebars. So seating position on these bikes, on any bike, is so important. If you want comfort, you want your back straight up and down. It's just physics. It's the way our bodies are designed. So when I'm sitting on this bike, even when my hands are on the handlebars, my back is nice and straight. These bars do a really great job of getting just enough pullback and just enough height that my hands are right between my shoulder and my heart. That's right where you want them for comfort. It just feels fantastic. And then these controls, they're a little bit forward. They're not really forward controls, but they're a little more than some bikes where you, your knees are kind of at a right angle. That can get kind of uncomfortable. This gives you a little more extension. For me, if it was my bike, I'd throw some highway bars on with some highway pegs so you can get out and really stretch out when you're on the highway. But having the controls kind of underneath you a little bit makes it super easy to ride in town when you're stopping and starting a lot. Your foot's right there, you just take one very small step and your feet are on the ground. This also has this, uh, this cool LED display. So they went away from anything on the tank on this model. They put everything right here on the top of your triple tree, right where your risers are. So you've got all your information. Your fuel gauge is built in. That's always visible. You got your heads up speedometer. This shows total miles. Then you can also see your trip A, your trip B. You've got range, so that's how far you can go on your current gas level. You've got a clock, which hasn't been set. And then you also have an RPM gauge. So even though you don't have the RPM gauge or the tachometer on top of your tank, you can still monitor what gear you're in and what RPM you're running, which is also super helpful when you're braking the bike in and you don't want to exceed a certain RPM range, all that. So all designed to just put that information right at your fingertips. I also love the LED headlight and a goofy feature you saw in the beginning of the video, but I love that this kind of has a parking light on it. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So let's say you grab lunch or you go and have a couple beers with some friends, your bike's parked out on the street, um, you want to be able to find it easily, kind of leave it lurking. You can hit this button for two seconds, your trip button, and it illuminates just the halo portion of the LED. That uses virtually no electricity. The battery barely even knows it's on, so that can sit for hours without, without draining your battery, but it kind of gives a look like, you know, your bike's sitting there waiting for you. It's, it's uh, ready to go when you are, right? It's pretty cool. So, funny little feature, but I think it's kind of cool. The other thing about this bike is, this is one of the most, uh, all Harleys are very customizable, but this is, this is one of those bikes, you could sell five of these in a week, and a year later, they look nothing like each other. The amount of customization you can do on these bikes, the amount of accessories available, you can turn it into more of a street rod, a, a rat rod type bike. You can also put bags on it and a windshield and make it kind of a small touring bike, a uh, small touring cruiser, if you will. But super versatile, the peg riding position is real classic Dyna, right? That's what all the Dynas have. So they've left the pegs on this bike. And um, I really love the performance to weight ratio on this bike. It's probably the best performing soft tail um, on, on the market for its, for its weight because it's such a lightweight bike. It sits so low, it's so nimble. But man, with that 114, power is just crazy. You gotta get this headlight. I mean, come on. How cool is that? That LED light is so bright. It does have the halo as well. It has that little parking feature. Um, okay, so this bike started its life. You might remember that they used to have twin headlights up front. It had a little more of a traditional cruiser look to it, but um, they updated the bike just a little bit when they moved it to the soft tail frame. Now, I don't know whether that was to help it fit the frame better, but what they took the coolness of the Fat Bob Dyna and they moved it to the soft tail and it's got the same kind of coolness. I always tell people, to me, this almost looks like something Mel, Mel Gibson would have ridden in Mad Max. You know, it's kind of, it almost looks like a bike that's kind of been put together. Um, like the guy, uh, was it Norman Reedus in, uh, in uh, Walking Dead, yeah. he builds that kind of that custom bike. It's kind of a, a rat rod type bike, but it's so cool, right? This kind of has that almost made in your garage type look, 
but man, it's 100% Harley Davidson. The performance is amazing. The fit and finish is amazing. This color is a new color for 21. This is Deadwood Green. Now this is the denim Deadwood Green. It kind of, it, I mean, it's, it's more or less like a drab, like, a, like an army green, if you will. Um, I really love it on this bike. It, it, just, it just fits in so well with the style of the bike. So, this bike again, Milwaukee 8, 114, massive power. It's got this really cool exhaust design. It has a really nice note to it when it's running, when it's idling. Um, designed to bring all the air through that large intake and put it through the engine and out the back. That's so important. You gotta open that up to get the performance you want from, from uh, Harley Davidson. Uh, again, the blacked out heads, just like the Street Bob, six speed transmission. Now this bike has something the Street Bob doesn't have and that's the adjustment for the rear suspension is even easier. It's right here on a dial. And not only is it right here on a dial, but you have numbers that you can use to judge where you're, where you're adjusting the suspension. So you just turn this knob and that goes in and out. That adjusts your preload. A little bit higher number when you're taking a passenger since this has the rear passenger seat and the rear pegs. Or you can dial it down a little bit and kind of soften the rear end if, if you like that feeling. Or you can stiffen the rear end and have a really super tight responsive bike. Another thing on this bike that makes it super high performance, it's got the inverted front forks. So there are a lot of reasons to do inverted front forks. Harley kind of borrowed a page out of the sport bike industry. All the sport bikes have inverted front forks. The reason for that is that because they're inverted, all the shocks are really responding to is the weight of the wheel and the tire and the fender and the, and the rotors, right? It's not responding to the weight of the, the motorcycle like you get on traditional forks. So when you're stopping, the wheel is coming up quickly and responding to changes in the, in the pavement or the surface that you're riding on versus the bike kind of dipping into the wheel, if that makes sense. It's just a physics thing. The other thing they do on this bike that's very performance inspired, they have dual floating rotors up front. So the floating rotors, metal, as you know, as it heats and cools, it expands, it contracts, it can kind of bend just a little bit. So what this, you get a close up of this right here, the floating rotor can be identified because these are actually two different pieces of metal combined by this, uh, this fastener here. They're kind of joined by that fastener. That allows these brake, um, disc brakes to flex just a little bit as they heat up and cool down. What that means is you get better contact with your pads more of the time. It promotes a little better brake wear and it means your brakes are gonna last longer, they're gonna wear more evenly, and you've got tremendous stopping power. So twin disc brakes on the front of this bike, 70% <clears throat> of your stopping power is on that front wheel. So they really load it up with the ability to stop quickly. Also a floating rotor on the rear, it's a single. And this bike comes standard with ABS. So just like in a car, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't really need ABS. No. A really good rider probably doesn't need ABS, but is there ever a chance you might get in a situation on a road you don't know and that corner sneaks up on you and you're trying to brake and you're losing traction? ABS is going to help you with that. So, in my opinion, ABS makes really good riders, safer riders, and even better riders. So, come standard on this bike. It's an awesome feature. This bike has a little different riding position than the Street Bob. It's more aggressive. Now it's still really comfortable. I'm still sitting pretty straight. My back is still pretty straight. Probably a little bit of a, of a bend in it, but it's, it's reasonable. But what you get with this bike are the drag bars and your hands are way out to the side. So you really feel like you're in control of this bike. So if I was to choose a bike, I wanted to go out and hit some of the highways in the valley and hit those windy roads. Man, this would be a lot of fun on those roads. Another kind of a peculiar thing about this bike is the way they've done the badging on the tank. It's the only Harley that I know of that they do this on. So on this side, you'll see it's got this really cool, just very simple barn shield. That looks very familiar. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> very simple barn shield, the stripe on this side. Then you come over to this side, and what do you have? You've got the Harley Davidson in the stripe itself and no barn shield. I, 
the first one I saw saw these, I thought, man, they made a mistake on this bike. That's the way they do it. Just another thing that kind of sets this bike apart. I believe it's the only Harley Davidson currently offered that has kind of mismatched logos. And it's intentional and it's kind of cool. I'd say my favorite are the rims and the tires. I was gonna say the rims. So these are cast aluminum. Again, Harley's known for their paints. That's not just on the tins, not just on the tank and the fenders or the side covers. That's also on the frame, the powder coating. It's on the wheels. I mean, these things are designed to take a lot of punishment and still keep looking great for years to come. And it's I got love the Harley that, Davidson etched into the rim. That laser etched Harley Davidson is really cool. They did that on this bike and they did it on the uh, FXDR, which is now discontinued very unique to this bike. There are a lot of things about this bike that make it super unique. The other thing is, these tires, these big old fat tires, man, the handling on this bike and the way it tracks over ruts and potholes and things like that, they're more like a car tire than they are a bike tire, right? They still perform really well on the bike, but they've got that extra traction, you've got super wide tread, so when you're really leaning on this bike, you're not gonna run out of your, out of your tire tread and be running on the side of your tires. They're designed to maintain contact with the pavement. Again, Dunlop tires. Dunlop makes a dual compound tire, so they're a little harder in the center where you're putting most of your wear, gives you more life. But then you've got a little softer shoulders on the tires, which gives you that nice sticky grip when you're going around corners. But the way this bike handles with those nice kind of chunky tires on it, it gives it that real uh, kind of a tough look to it. But man, just handles so nice. And this is actually a surprisingly smooth bike because it's the same frame as the street. It's the same frame as any other soft hair, which they're designed for that perfect mix of performance and comfort. Okay. Thank you for tuning in and thank you so much to David and Emerald City Harley for letting us film here and check out these two beautiful bikes. So now we're up to the point where you all have been waiting for, which one are we gonna choose? I'm gonna let David go first. Oh, great, throw me under the bus. Awesome. All the way under the bus. Um, okay, so the first thing is, I'm kind of an old dude. So I, I comfort for me now kind of trumps everything else. Um, so the comfort on, on the bike, for, for me, the way this one feels, the handlebars, the pullback, how straight my back is, plus the amount of customization I could do on this bike, I think I'd lean this way. Um, but I do have to tell you in terms of uniqueness and just kind of the what I call the badass factor, yeah. that bike is really tough to beat. So I have, I would have a hard time picking. I, I don't know. I, I, I can kind of envision this one to me, you kind of ride it the way it is, maybe do some performance stuff, but for the most part, you don't really stick a windshield on it, you're not going to put yeah. bags on it, that kind of stuff. It's kind of that stripped down cruiser. This one I can see it becoming lots of different things. So it might be more fun to customize, but boy, you can't really go wrong. So I guess for me, if I'm buying it off the showroom floor and doing nothing to it, I'd go with the fat bottle. But me, I look towards the future. So with that said, I'm gonna go with the 2021 Street Bottle. I love them both. This is the hardest decision between two bikes that either David or I have ever had to make. And who knew? Yeah. And if you like this comment, please like, comment subscribe and hit the bell because I'll be posting comment all, content all the time and you don't want to miss anything. I have and, an idea. What's that? What if we just buy both and then share them? That's a great idea. Just boom. Right on. Oh. And if you're interested in an awesome deal, an awesome bike, please head over to Emerald City Harley. Hit up David. He'll hook you up. Take great care of you. And when you come in, always let them know Barricade sent you. And as always, brothers and sisters, stay safe and ride your ride.